Hello! In this video, I would like to talk about Bayes' rule and its application to medical testing. Let's start with a well-known example called the false positive paradox. You pick a random person and test them for a certain disease, and the test comes back positive. Now, what is the probability that the person actually has that disease? First, we need to look at the facts involved. Let's say the disease affects one out of every 100 people and the test to catch this disease is 90% accurate. This means that if a person does have the disease, then the test will come back positive with a 90% probability and comes back negative with a 10% probability. It also means that a person who does not have the disease will get a negative result with a 90% probability and will get a positive result with a 10% probability. So, based solely on this information, what is the probability that the person actually has the disease? How do we solve these kinds of problems? Relative frequency is usually a powerful method in answering these types of questions. Let's consider a sample consisting of 1,000 people. Since the disease occurrence rate is 1%, on average 10 of them have this disease and 990 of them do not. They all go and have the test done. Because the test is 90% accurate, only 9 out of 10 people with the disease get a positive result and one gets an incorrect result of negative. Then, of the remaining 990 people, 99 get a positive result and 891 get a negative result. Now, this problem can be treated as a conditional probability, a concept we discussed in the previous video. We already know that the person's test result was positive. So, what does this information tell us? It tells us that we are either in this group or this one, because the result was not negative, right? So, out of these people, the probability of one having the disease is actually 9 divided by 9 plus 99 which is about 8.3%. This might be surprising to most people because we said that the test is 90% accurate. But this probability is low because the probability of having the disease is low to begin with. Only 1 out of 100 people or 1% have it. So, with the new information, this probability jumps to 8.3%, which is still pretty low. Although the percentage went up, the good news is that there is still a good chance that the test was simply wrong and you don't actually have the disease. My main point here is that to solve this problem, we started with the probability of having the disease and then updated this probability to the probability of having the disease given that you had the positive test result. So, we updated the probability from 1% to 8.3%. This updating of probabilities demonstrates the Bayesian way of thinking about probability. The way we think about this is important because in many real life scenarios, we tend to forget about this number, 1%, which is called the base rate, and just focus on the accuracy of the test. This is an example of one of the flaws in our intuitive thinking, and Daniel Kahneman describes this concept very well in Thinking Fast and Slow. Gerd Gigerenzer's book, Risk Savvy, also discusses this concept with some real-life implications. For example, he talks about breast cancer screening for women and the statistics behind the routine mammograms. He estimates that roughly one out of every three women who participate in mammography screening regularly will experience a false positive result at some point in their lives through these tests. It is important to note that in the discussed problem, we dealt with a random person getting this test done. This is to show that we don't have any other information about this person to help us solve the problem. A different scenario would be if someone were having symptoms of this disease and their doctor suggested getting tested for it. In that case, the symptoms will be additional evidence and we need to consider them when updating the disease probability. Another issue to be cautious of is the implications of symptoms. For example, I am a father with small children and I read about various things online and then might worry about my child is showing symptoms of a particular disease or illness. Of course, just because a child may be acting a certain way or complaining of a symptom commonly associated with a specific disease does not mean automatically that the child is sick. 
This is why it is always important to not only keep the base rate of the disease and illness in mind, but also to consult with doctors before worrying because they know how to interpret all of these information accurately. To summarize, in this video we discussed how to update the probability of a specific disease given some evidence. We started with the probability of a disease and given more evidence we were able to update this probability, a process involving the Bayesian way of thinking. We will revisit this concept as we go throughout the course, but I would suggest going through the example in this video yourself when you are done watching so you understand the thinking and reasoning behind it. We also briefly discussed the difference between a random screening and a test conducted in response to actual symptoms, and I stressed the importance of keeping base rates in mind when dealing with illnesses, as well as always consulting with a medical professional before jumping to any conclusions in these situations. Thank you for watching.